When we talk about organizing quantitative data in tables, we're talking about constructing frequency distributions. This is a little bit more complicated than it was for qualitative data because qualitative data was already organized into categories. Quantitative data isn't, so we have to create the categories ourselves or have the software do it. So what we're going to talk about here is creating the categories or the classes. So the lower class limit of a class is the smallest value within the class, and the upper class limit is the largest value within the class. The distance between consecutive lower class limits or between consecutive upper class limits is called the class width. Here's a frequency distribution for the ages of actresses who won the Best Actress Award. So here are our classes, 21 to 30, 31 to 40, and so on. So the lower class limits are just the first numbers in each class. So 21, 31, and so on up to 71. Then the upper class limits are the largest numbers in each class. And notice that here, because our ages are just given in years, we go from 21 to 30, and then the next class starts at 31. Now the class width, this is a little bit easy to get mixed up on. The class width is a difference between two consecutive lower class limits or between two consecutive upper class limits. It is not the difference between the lower class limit and the upper class limit. So to find the class width, you look at two lower class limits that are consecutive for instance, the 21 and the 31, and just find the difference between those two. So the class width is going to be 10. And notice that it's the same no matter which two consecutive lower class limits you look at, or if you look at two consecutive upper class limits, the difference is always 10 here. Now usually we won't construct frequency distributions ourselves, we'll let software do it. If you have a very big set of data, then constructing a frequency distribution by hand is just too time consuming. But we're going to look at how to do it just to give you a little bit more understanding of frequency distributions overall. If we want to construct a frequency distribution, the first step is to divide the range of data values into equal categories. Those are our classes. So this is the most complicated part. Now there are two ways that we can start with this. We can either decide how many classes we want to have, and the number of classes just to make a frequency distribution that makes sense should be somewhere between 5 and 20. Less than 5 is too few, more than 20 is just too many. So we can either decide on the number of classes, or we can decide on the class width, whichever one makes more sense with our data. So if we decide on the number of classes first, then we use that to find the class width. The formula for this is that we take the maximum data value minus the minimum data value, and then we divide that by the number of classes we want to have. Once we get that number, we round up to the next whole number. And this is a place that we always have to round up so that we'll get all of our data covered. Once we have found our class width, then we need to find a starting point or the lower class limit for our first class. This can either be the minimum data value or it can be a number less than that if that makes more sense. Now once we have that initial lower class limit, we find the rest of the lower class limits by adding the class width on. Once we have all of the lower class limits, then we can find our upper class limits 
And for these, they have to be less than the lower class limit of the next class. So we can do this by looking at each lower class limit and subtracting one unit, depending on how our data is measured. If our data values are measured in tenths, then we'll subtract one-tenth. If they're measured in hundred, then we'll subtract one-hundredth, and so on. So once we have all of the class limits, we have our classes all set out, then we just go through our data and just like we did with qualitative data, we do tallies and we find the frequency for each class. So here's an example of constructing a frequency distribution. So this data represents the time between eruptions for a random sample of 45 eruptions at Old Faithful. And we're going to construct a frequency distribution for this. If we look through here, we can see that the minimum data value is 672, and the maximum data value is 738. So the difference between those two is 66. That gives us an idea of, of the range of our data. Because it's 66, we could go ahead and choose 10 for the class width. That would be an easy one to deal with. And that would give us a reasonable number of classes because it would give us seven classes. And again, because our data range is 66, if we divided that by 10, we get 6.6, .6, and if we round up, that would give us seven classes. Next, we need to choose our starting point. We could choose our minimum data value, which is 672, but since our class width is 10, it would be a little bit easier to use 670 instead. To calculate the rest of our lower class limits, we just keep adding 10. So we start with the 670, add 10, so our next lower class limit is 680, our next lower class limit after that would be 690, and then 700, 710, 720, and 730. So here are all of our lower class limits. Now we need to find the upper class limits. And again, we're going to look at the lowest class limit of the next class. So for this first one, we're going to look at the 680, and we want to make this one unit less than that. So our upper class limit for our first class is going to be 679. And the reason that we make it one unit less is that we can't have our classes overlapping. Each data value has to fit into one and only one class. So we can't make this 680 because then if we had a data value that was 680, we wouldn't know which class to put it in. Now our next upper class limit is going to be 690 minus 1, so that would give us 689. And another way to calculate this is, just like we did with our lower class limits, once you have this first upper class limit, you can just start adding the class width on. So if we took 679 plus 10, we'd get 689. And then we can just go down through the rest of our upper class limits. And notice this last one, the 739, we don't have a next lower class limit to look at, so we just add 10 to the previous low upper class limit. Okay, once we have all of our classes determined, so here are all of them, then we can go through our data and find the frequency for each class, just like we did with qualitative data. So this is our frequency distribution. Now sometimes we have discrete data and relatively few different values. And in that case, we may just make the classes the different values of the data. So this frequency distribution here represents 
the number of available cars in a household based on a random sample of 50 households. And these were all of the values that were in the data. It just went from 0 up to 5. So it's easier just to make those values our classes. So here we're just going through and counting how many zeros there were, how many ones there were, and so on.